My name is Dr. Isaac. Uh, I'm a physiotherapist. Have you ever been to a physiotherapist before? Um, not recently, to be honest. It's been quite some time. So, um, how old are you? I am 37, just turned. All right, man. Uh, so you're 37 years old, and can you tell me a little bit about the mechanism of injury, which is basically what happened to you? Why Why are you and I having this discussion? Today? Yeah, so Tuesday morning, um, I went for a run here in the Bronx, um, and while I was, and I just started maybe a minute into the run, um, I... I noticed that there was a bus coming my way, and for me to try to kind of get away from it, um, I didn't look at the floor to see exactly where I was going. Mm -hmm. um, but then I noticed that I um, that I stepped into like this little small crater. You know how New York streets are so mm -hmm. um, have all these craters in you know created in in, in, the, in the street. So. Um, I noticed um, that I stepped wrong and my ankle, you know, completely um, bent, let me see, down, so I'm going to say down and to the right type. Yeah. So which well, ankle is it exactly? My left ankle. Okay, so your ankle went down into the and right, to my right. Kind of, it fell inwards, kind of? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> it's called an inversion. Okay. All right. Then what happened? Um, Okay. And then um, I kind of felt a little bit of like a pr like a pain sprain type of thing, but it wasn't that much. So I um, I decided to continue for the run, and I actually did run the three miles. To be honest, you continued running. I did continue running. Yeah, three miles. Okay. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Did you have a lot of pain uh, during the, during that run, or it was it was so cold? It's so cold outside that you probably didn't feel it, right? I didn't feel that much, to be honest. Okay. Um, I, I I did exercise, like I did went really hardcore on the run, I'm not going to lie. Okay. Um, and then I went to the gym, took out my shoes, um, just to see what, you know, if it was already swelling up. I didn't see that much swelling. I just did a little bit of stretching. Um, and then I walked home, um, for which I started the process of putting ice and uh, taking some Advil. Um, to, all, all Tuesday. So, contrary to what you believe, um, the stretching that you're doing actually is creating more trauma to the ankle. Okay, that's the first thing that I'm going to tell you. So there's your value number one, something that you're not aware of, right? So why do people stretch? I think a lot of people stretch because they feel that they're loosening something up and they're improving mobility and stretching out the tissues and the tendons. But let's use some um, logic together here. When you injure something, let's just say, let's forget the ankle right now. Mm -hmm. when, you in, when you injure your elbow, right? We've all injured our elbows. We've all bumped our elbows into something. It's a very common area to bump. And you get that kind of zinging sensation across and you get the, the funny bone gets hit and you're in pain. What do you do? You, the first thing you do is you protect. You go like this and you rub it down, right? You go like this and it makes it feel really nice. When, when we're rubbing it down like that and, and it feels good and relaxing, this area of your skin has a lot of nerves, nerve fibers in there. They're called cutaneous nerves. The cutaneous nerves are like these little wires that come off of the main nerves. The per peripheral nerves are the big long wires that come out of your neck and they give each individual muscle a couple mm -hmm. of fibers in, to give power. So the brain is like a computer and it sends this electrical signals to each individual muscle so that when you think of a movement, you can bend your elbow and you can straighten your elbow and move individual fingers like I'm doing now, right? To, yep. to write, or play piano, or play guitar, or to just be dexterous with your hand and your elbow. But when there's trauma, right? When you bump it, these nerves, these cutaneous nerves, these little sensory nerves that live on this, underneath the surface of the skin and you can actually feel them, you can actually make them hurt if you put pressure, those cutaneous nerves have a pathway to the brain, to the okay. computer. And the brain is so smart that it processes the data and goes, hey, this is not normal. This bang to my elbow is not normal. I'm gonna protect you. you. I'm gonna protect you, uh, bo Mr. Body, because mm -hmm. I'm your protector and I'm not gonna let you move your elbow, right? 
Now, what does this have to do with your ankle? Give me a second, and I'm going to bring it back to your ankle and explain how it all works together. It's going to make a, a lot more sense. You'll understand why people sprain their ankles over and over. These little nerve endings over here also have pressure sensors in the ligaments of the elbow and inside the skin. And the skin is the largest organ in the body, right? So mm -hmm. it envelops our whole body. It's, it is an organ. And these little wires, right, they're the pathway to this fiber optic cables of these wires that go up to the brain. And it says, hey, is my elbow in the right position? Is my joint in the right position? Because if it's not in the right position, then that means something's wrong. I'm going to go ahead and protect. So okay. the two things that happen with injury, okay, to tissue is a chemical response, which is inflammation, swelling, uh, tenderness, redness, right? That's the chemical part. Chemical means mm -hmm. local, lo a local fever, right? It's the same thing as a fever in your body. You get the redness, the swelling, the tenderness, and the pain. Those are the four things. It's called acute inflammation. And correct, taking Advil totally helps. For the first 72 hours, you pop Advil multiple times a day, max it out, because you need it in your bloodstream to clean up the inflammation. Great job. Ice is for the local redness and swelling. Okay? So okay. it helps bring that down, decompresses. That's fantastic. But what about the fact that your brain is going, hey, every time you move me, I'm going to make you have more pain. Right? Mm -hmm. Every time you try to make my elbow straight because you bumped it so hard, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to let you go. That's called proprioception. Proprioception is kinesthetic awareness. Kinesthetic means kinesthesia means movement. Okay. So your brain now officially put something in there called a neuro tag. It tagged that area of your brain and said, hey, brain, it's called a homunculus, but hey, brain, that part of your tissue is no longer in use. Shut it down. And your brain literally locks it down like a virus. And it sends bad information to those muscles and joints. So every time you try to activate those little nerves that give power, to those specific muscles for dexterous movement, fine movement, and movement in all different patterns, it doesn't let it. It only lets you use your whole body's movement. And that's why we get stiff, locked, restricted, tight, and we move like a robot yeah. when we have an injury, whether it be your neck being stuck. So now let's go zoom back to your ankle. If you understand mm -hmm. me here, two things happen to you. One, you have chemical inflammation and you're treating it well. But what about the proprioception? proprioception, the kinesthetic awareness, the yeah. ability of your brain to break down and go, hey, mm -hmm. I can break down movements again. Your brain does not know how to break down your ankle movements anymore. You're going to work and you're going to move. If you're going to t attempt to run or work out, your ankle and your knee and your hip are going to be kind of like one unit because your ankle is going to feel like it doesn't want to do the job anymore. So it's going to bring drive to the knee. The knee is going to be the poor knee is going to be the suspension now. <laughs> yeah. And the hip is then going to go, oh, wow, I can't handle that much. Uh, the knee is going to say, I can't handle that much load. So guess what? Your hip is going to start to suffer. And it can af affect the whole chain reaction. Right? So that ankle and foot is so precious because it's the first thing that hits the ground. And as soon as it hits the ground, everything changes because it absorbs shock. Mm -hmm. It picks up the load or the pressure of your whole body sends that load up the ankle into the knee and then distributes the load to the hip and to your back so you can develop back problems now hip problems knee problems just from this little ankle injury i've seen it a lot and if you don't do the things that we discussed today yeah you'll start to feel better because the chemical inflammation will go down but guess what every time your foot hits the ground when you run your foot's going to hit the wrong way because your brain locked up that movement and it said, hey, 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 we are no longer to use the perineal muscle. Perineal muscle is the muscles of the foot that makes you go like this. Yep. So pushing outwards is going to be a little painful now. And pushing downwards is going to be painful too. Maybe a little bit inwards as well. It's going to hurt as well. So okay. your brain now has locked up that whole process of separating movements. And it's created a lack of dissociation. You can't dissociate those normal movements. Hence, you need to rebuild that proprioception. That is the key point of this conversation. So okay. what you're getting here today is the value of me explaining to you what proprioception is and how important it is to you for you to do certain things and not to do certain things so you can go back and run 
without the fear that it will happen again. Because the next time it happens again, what will happen is there are a bunch of ligaments on the outside of your ankle, and I'm going to use my I'm going to use mm -hmm. my hand as that explanation. It's the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. Originally, supposedly we were we used to walk on all fours. Mm -hmm. Originally, anatomically, right? Before we were uh, evolved people, right? We were yeah. monkeys, supposedly, right? So, um, if we walked on all fours, our hands were just like feet, right? So they have very similar patterns. The hands and the feet are very similar, and they have the same sensory input from the homunculus the brain the neuro tag the brain tags those areas of our body with a lot of sensitivity why our feet and our hands are super sensitive right and yeah. why is that because they need dexterity they need to they need to grab the ground they need to grab things and items so we have lots of nerve endings there but once there's a strain or a stretch on that area we can create a lot of damage hence the ligaments on the outside of your ankle right now okay yeah. and you'll show me the outside of your ankle in a second but those ligaments on the outside of your ankle, those are really swollen right now and stretched. What you did was you stretched them inward like that. It's called yeah. an inversion sprain. Um, and, um, and you twisted it inwards. And what happens is uh, they got traumatized when you went in and then your foot went right back again. It kind of did like a rubber band movement. It snapped in and snapped back out. So all the tendons that cross that area, they're inflamed. They're trying to do the work of the ligaments that were now strained. Those ligaments have those mechanoreceptors, mechano means mm -hmm. movement, receptors it, that connect in your brain and tell your foot where it is in space. So every time you hit the ground, your brain goes, ah, okay, when you hit the ground, Mr. Foot, I'm not going to let you twist. But now if you try to run a workout, your foot's going to go wobbly. It's going to do its own thing. You ever walk off like a, a curb and your foot just kind of does one of them? Yeah, yeah. Your foot will continue doing that. Those are called repetitive ankle sprains. And once you injure those ligaments and overstretch those nerves, your brain cannot reset it. The only way to do that is through balance exercises. So what okay. you are doing now is creating more damage by stretching it. Do not, not stretch the foot. On the contrary, <laughs> you do not want to be stretching that foot. You'll be creating more damage because it's overstretched already, right? So what do you do when you bump your elbow? Do you go like this? No, what do you do? Do that, right? You put load on it, you, you actually hold it in place until there's the ligaments and the tendons and, and all the tissues start to chill out, relax, and reset themselves. It's the same concept with your foot. I'm not telling you not to walk on it. I'm actually telling you on the contrary. I'm saying walk on it, move on it, but load it without stretching it. Because okay. stretching it will actually create more damage than good. You're overstretched already. Right. Now we want to go ahead and compress. Okay? So okay. compression, so now let's use the same concept. Instead of doing this to it, because it's been done already, or going this way, most people will take their foot, right? If you can imagine this is the foot and this is the, the tib and fib, mm -hmm. they'll go like that. They'll be like, oh, I'm stretching it out. Oh, it feels so good. Yeah, it feels good for a second because your brain processes that as, as a, like a massage. It, it feels good when you go like this because there's these C fibers or, or pain fibers that you relax when you get this light massage over the skin. <laughs> so it's the same feeling when you do this because you're stretching skin. Hence, it feels good, but it doesn't actually create good value for you because it creates more damage. Am I making sense? 100% All right. So Thank the, you. the things that we're going to look at right now is your ankle to make sure it's intact. To okay. make sure, how do we know it's fractured or not? There's, a, there's some studies that have been done in Canada that say that if you can touch the tip of your ankle and it's very painful, there may be a stress fracture there or an avulsion fracture. An avulsion fracture basically means that if, I can if you can imagine these are the two bones of your ankle and this is your foot on the bottom, right? Mm -hmm. If these are your two bones, the outer bone, which is the tip where the, where the pain is, that outer bone is called a fibula. Okay? <coughs> So the fibula has the fibula has the ligaments attached to it that get sprained, that gets twisted. Okay, the outer ligaments are usually the ones that get sprained. So those those ligaments are called the anterior talofibular ligament, the posterior talofibular ligament, and the cal calcaneal fibular ligament. There are three ligaments there. Those okay. ligaments connect bone to bone. So what happens is those ligaments, when they get stretched, right? Sometimes they could take the bone with them. Okay. And the bone, when it twists, the, the ankle sprain is so hard, 
it can actually rip the tip of the fibula. The fibula is the bone on the bottom. So we have to make sure that there's no fracture there. If you're able to walk, the question I have right now is, are you able to put weight through your foot? Yeah. You're able to put at load, full load, pressure on it, no pain? Um, a little bit of pain. I mean, not, not um, okay. I'll do, I'll do let right me now. See. Let, me, let me have you remove your shoe on both sides, roll up your pants, so mm -hmm. we can take a look at how much pressure you're able to put. And then we're going to do a test um, to see if, you know, it, it, it's just a kind of a, a scan to let us know, do you need an x-ray, do you not need an x-ray, okay? Okay. Okay, cool. So why don't you, okay, why don't you stand on your bad foot for me? One? Yep. So just stand, just balance on the bad foot. Can you do that? You see how it's kind of uh, shaky a little bit? Yeah. Close your eyes and do it. Now your eyes are closed, right? Yeah. Okay. Your muscles are like working super hard to, to create that movement for you. Now the right side, you could see the difference. Okay. Now stand on your bad foot again. Yeah, you don't have much time on that set. So the goal, so exercise number one I would give you is close your eyes. And it's so simple, right? Standing yep. on the foot and loading it up like that. Just balancing and closing your eyes. Okay. Okay. Now why are we doing that? To increase the proprioception. This increases, this, this compression reset, resets the nerves and the ligaments to teach you how to balance again through that foot. So balance is the most important exercise you want to do with that kind of a sprain. Now let's take a look at the outside of your ankle. So can you put your, the outside of your ankle towards the screen? I want to see what it looks like. Okay. I could see, uh, yes, there's a pouch of swelling right there. Go ahead and touch that. Yes, exactly. That is called the fibula. The tip of that, that bone there is called a malleolus. So if you slide your foot, your finger all the way down to the tip of that bone, go back a little bit, backward, backward, backward. Yes, right there. Go up a little bit more. There's like a little bump, like a hard bump. Nope, nope, nope. A little more. Take your hand and put it on the side of your ankle. No, like flat on the side so that I can't see your hand. Your, I can't oh. see your, uh, your ankle. Oh, okay. Yes, perfect. Now, all I want you to do is stay there. Now slide your fingers slowly up towards your knee. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Stop. Right there. You feel that hard bone? Yep. Yep, that is called the malleolus. That's the fibula. Okay. Got it. Your fibula is the outer part of your knee bones and ankle bones. Okay? That bone goes all the way up to your uh, side of your knee. Now, I want you to slide down all the way to the tip of that and then come up a little bit more. Okay, slide back up until you hit the tip. When you start to feel it, right when you feel the tip, right there, come down a little bit more. Okay, now put as much pressure as you can through that and tell me if it feels very tender. I mean, right here, right here it feels very In tender. In the front it feels tender, but on the bone itself, does it feel tender? No, not okay. too much. So I want to let you know something. Now, feel the other side of your foot. You don't have to turn. Feel the other side of your foot, same thing, and put as much pressure as you can with your finger, on your, your middle finger, index finger, through that tip of that bone, and tell me if you feel a lot of tenderness on the tip of the bone. Um, just the tip of the bone. Do you feel a lot of tenderness on the tip of the bone? Is it very tender? Just a little bit, not just too a much. Little, okay. Yeah. So I want to let you know, um, JC, that yep. <laughs> you don't have an ankle fracture 99% of the, of the way there. Okay. So that's, that's a good thing. You know, the studies have shown that if there's the tip of the bone is very tender and uh, it's painful to put weight on it, obviously you probably have a fracture and you okay. would need um, some sort of a stability. Um, you would need to be casted in some sort of a thing. But I'm still going to recommend to you to do an air cast. Okay. So an Aircast is basically, um, you could buy them online, it's called Aircast, and it's basically just like a, a soft support for your ankle, or you can get an ankle support. You know those ones that um, soccer players wear? That, uh, they, they're called lace-ups. Okay. It looks like a sock. It's a crisscross brace. You basically like lace-up, it looks like the inside of a high top. 
You know, if you pull out the inside of a high top and now you just attach the laces at the front, mm -hmm. it, just a, like a lace up with a cross crosses back and forth, and it ties around your ankle to hold everything snug together so your ankle can't go in and out. It locks okay. up the heel. It's called a heel lock brace. Okay. I would okay. recommend you wear that because you're athletic. And you know what? To be honest with you, in a week, you could start doing some light jogging with that brace on. Really? Yep. Mm hmm. <laughs> yep. That'd be you, great. Could you could do some really light jogging if you do the exercises I'm going to prescribe today. Okay. Okay. So the other thing is, I want you to do for me is um, let's take a look at your ankle now and look at the motions of your ankle. Can you twist your ankle in? Can you twist your ankle out? Um, I want to I want to see the movements of your ankle. Okay, so let's take a look at your, the movements of your ankle. So go ahead and point the camera down at your foot again for me. Yep. Nice. All right. So all I'm going to ask you to do now is exactly what you're doing. Stay right where you are, and exactly what you're doing is drive your knee. Keep your heel on the ground. Drive your knee forward as far as you can, almost like you're stretching the back of your calf. Good. Do you have any pain with that? Mm, not too much. I just feel it just feels a little awkward, to, but okay. no pain. That's just the swelling in there. Okay, that looks good. The mobility looks fine. Um, now, let's take a look at uh, facing me. Okay, and now, um, now, what I want you to do is kind of, um, kind of put your toes facing upward, um, like that. So, like, lift your toes up off the floor, and tell me if you have any pain with that. No pain. Good. Again, uncomfortness. Got yeah. it. Uh huh. Now, push your toes towards the couch. So, um, when I say push your toes towards the couch, kind of point your toes in the direction of the couch. Your big toe and all your other toes should kind of point towards the direction of the couch. So lift your heel up. No, the other way. So kind of like lean back a little bit, JC. Lean back mm -hmm. all the way, kind of really lean back. Yep, so that you can bring your toes up to the ceiling. Excellent, perfect. Now, point your big toe to the couch. To the couch, yes. Tell me, does that hurt you? That does not hurt you. That does not hurt you, okay. Take your hand. Uh, on the right side and really try to pull your foot over put it on the outside of your toes on the outside of your foot like grab your hand yoga man yoga grab it and put it on the outside of your foot the outside the, the side of your foot not the inside the outside more to the other side this way? yes 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 yeah yeah where that brown yeah perfect perfect and now try to push your foot towards the couch again can you force your foot to the couch with your hand no, yes. don't, tw don't twist your knee. You're twisting your knee. Just your foot. Just what you did before. Bring your toes over. I'm sorry. Point your, to point your toes all the way to the couch. Yes. Now, now, can you force it there with your hand? Yes. And tell me, does that hurt you on the outside of your foot? It does not hurt me. It does not hurt you. Okay, now go the other way. Same concept. Don't turn... Your knee is rolling out, so I'd, I'd rather you not roll your knee out. Like, lock your knee out. All I want is the foot to move, so... Point your little pinky toe to that little brown couch thing that you have on the outside. You know, the other way. Yes, oh, okay, yes, okay. yes, yes. Now force it out there and tell me, do you have pain on the inside or the outside of your foot? No pain. Okay, cool. Last thing I want you to do, JC, is mm -hmm. point your toes to me as far as you can. Really get them down there as hard as you can and tell me if you have any discomfort or pain with that. Um, just a little discomfort. On and where is the discomfort? On that same outside of the um, foot? Perfect. Yeah. JC, you have a minor sprain strain. Um, honestly, uh, you know, with physiotherapy, you can go see a physiotherapist or do it online um, for the first 10 uh, visits or 30 days, whichever comes first, okay. in, in the state of New York, which basically means it's direct access. Do you really need an orthopedist? Honestly, I don't know what your insurance is, JC. Mm -hmm. You sure you sure are paying me a bunch of money here today, cash, to uh, to do this uh, service for you, and to go to an orthopedist is going to cost you uh, an arm and a leg. <laughs> I, I, I feel you. You know, I, I think to go to an orthopedist and get an X-ray on there is not necessary. Okay. Um, from what I'm seeing here, as long as you and I keep in touch in the next couple of days, and I know you're improving, um, the, the 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 checkpoints that I did right now tell me that really this is a minor sprain of your ankle 
Um, I'm going to do one more test on you, just a functional exam. I'm going to just see, can you do a full squat? Um, I want to see, can you do a full squat? Because you're going to be working out. So I'm going to do a couple of tests, functional tests. It's called a functional movement screen. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just going to see, can you function, squat, can you get up, can you get down? So I can tell you if you could go back and work out again, okay? So let's have you do a CrossFit squat. You know, and a CrossFit squat is basically, um, you know, feet spread apart like that. And then basically, if you could see me, and just bring your butt down to the floor as if you're holding a bar barbell over your head with a straight back. Okay? And I want to see your ankles and, and foot. So... Point it more towards your ankle and foot so that I can see. Now spread your feet apart. And basically squat, you know. Come down. Bring your butt down all the way. Bring it down, bring it down, bring it down. Keep going. Go, 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 go. And tell me, are you good with that? Okay, I do see some limitation on the left side a little bit. Uh, you are having a trouble getting all the way to dorsiflexion, which basically means getting the foot to its maximal uh, potential because it's jamming up because yeah. of the swelling. It's jamming up. And I'm sure you feel it in there. It's kind of like yeah. annoying you. Yeah. yeah, it is. To be honest with you, man, yep. <laughs> that's actually a very good exercise for your foot because it's going to create load through those ligaments and help them kind of connect again. So contrary to what you've been doing, like stretching it, the, the two things that I would for force you to do Standing on one foot, balancing, and start doing balancing on a unsteady foam, like a mattress, standing on a mattress, or okay. some sort of uh, wobble board, or some sort of BOSU ball at the gym. Okay. Uh, I don't see a reason you should fall. I mean, you're pretty good balance in there. I would start with the BOSU ball on its belly, so that the BOSU ball, the bottom of the BOSU ball is this way, mm -hmm. and the flat part of the BOSU ball is facing up and you're standing on it with two feet and literally take a ball and throw it against the wall and see if you can kind of balance yourself like a circus act, you know? <laughs> yeah. Standing on one foot, shifting weight, trying almost like a surfboard, trying to get all your weight on one leg and getting it onto the other leg while you're standing. So uh, you'd be standing on the, on the uh, BOSU and like kind of shifting your body weight back and forth on the BOSU, all right? Then squats, f straight squats with, with with maybe some dumbbells, you know, just get it, get dorsiflexion back in there, mobility. Okay. And then get really good with getting, maybe progressing to doing squats on the flat part of the BOSU again, holding onto a barbell, I mean, um, uh, a ballet bar. So you're holding okay. onto a ballet bar and you're doing squats, but your, your foot now is an unsteady surface. Do you understand what I'm okay. saying? You want to improve that mobility through stability not stretching okay. you are not to Perfect. stretch the foot the more you stretch the foot the more problems you get now when can you stretch the foot and what type of stretches can you do i would say in six to eight weeks six weeks when you're fully healed and your ligament is healed the best the best reset the best reset or the best uh ligamentous uh technology or technique that I would give you to do instead of stretching the way you do it where you're you're doing one of those runner stretches you know the leaning forward one which I think mm -hmm. is the crappiest stretch on the planet because it does the contrary of what you need for running what you need is you need to be able to hit the ground with your toes and then drop to your heel when you're stretching this way what you're doing is you're taking off the tension off the Achilles tendon which is the tendon in the back you get Got my it. point what you're yep, doing is you're taking your power away from yourself. Right. By and stretching that out, yeah, you're taking away the tensile power, the, 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 uh, the explosive power of the Achilles to leverage you to run and explode by stretching, right? It's almost if I did, if I'm trying to do uh, pec, pec, pec exercises, the pec deck or, or bench pressing, and I'm stretching this out, stretching this out, I'm losing the tension here, and I'm not going to get the same... Uh, length tension relationship I'm gonna lose the power the nervous system is gonna be overstretched I'm not gonna get the same drive on the contrary I want to do isometrics or tighten this area up so that I get a better driver for leverage same thing with the foot the more you stretch that foot the more weaker 
the Achilles is going to present itself. Um, and the, the, the technique that I like to do is, is, was created by a doctor, Robin McKenzie. Robin okay. McKenzie has passed away, unfortunately, but he was a genius. Um, and he came up with the McKenzie method, which is something I really believe in. And it helps you, it guides you on how to fix yourself using very selective um, movement patterns to your, to your joints and tissues so that you reset the mechanoreceptors to their best uh, position for safety of proprioception and kinesthetic awareness. How do you do that? Okay. Very simple. I'll show you right now. So good. I'm going to see if you can see my foot, and then you can practice this on your good foot, and then when you, in six weeks pass, you're going to do the, whatchamacallit, the, uh, this stretch, okay? So okay. here's my foot, uh, my yellow sock here, for all <laughs> you people out there that are going to be watching this, um, don't mind my yellow sock, okay? Um, but my yellow uh, t uh, gold toe sock, right? Um, that's what happens when you when you turn 42 and you're married and you don't care anymore. You know that's really what it's all about, right? So here's my um, here's my foot. So you, here's my foot and ankle. I'm grabbing the top of my foot, JC. Yep. And I got my uh, at least I don't JC. At least I don't have a holes in my sock, right? That's a, that's, that's a great that's way to think great, of it. Right? Like it would be really embarrassing if if the doctor on the other side like takes off his shoe and he has like holes in his sock, right? Yeah, um, that wouldn't be cool, right? <laughs> so that that's awesome. I'm so happy this morning. I woke up without you know socks with my holes in them, right? So here, here we go. We got to keep it fun, man. We got to keep it real. So um, thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to lighten it up for you, man. You don't have to be so stressed out. You're gonna be running again, working out. Everything's gonna be cool. So I appreciate it. Out.